Okay, so once you uh, talk to Rin and you head up to the top, you're going to begin a boss battle with uh, with Evre. And Evre can definitely cause some problems for, for new players, so it's a boss that's not to be underestimated, that's for sure. Let's have a look. What can we customise here? Nothing of much interest. Auto Med is an ability that I haven't talked about. Automatically use items to cure status ailments. So that's all well and good, but the only problem with this is if you get, for example, confused or put under berserk status, which are two of the most dangerous ones, if uh, if you have other ailments like uh, poison, then you're not going to be able to use Auto Med. So it's not the greatest uh, ability to have, even though even though it sounds pretty cool. So once again, I'm going to go in there completely blind. I'm not going to. I'm not going to customize anything, I'm not going to prepare anything, and hopefully I'll still be able to make my way through the battle. But it's not recommended. But hopefully through uh, what goes on in the battle and what I tell you, you should be able to, to do a fairly decent job when you get to him. Open the hatch. We fight. Evray is truly mighty. Be well prepared. Okay. Is there anything new? Nope. Nothing new. We gotta pay? If we lose, you'll die too, buddy. I have faith in your victory. Gee, thanks. <laughs> oh, rinse an odd chap, that's for sure. Okay. I'm just going to go for HP boosters for now, and uh, we'll change our stuff in battle depending on how it goes. And obviously we don't have Yuna as well, so that's not good. I'm going to buy some Phoenix Downs actually. I have a lot of gill, and I don't want to run out of Phoenix Downs. Okay. Thank you. You're yeah, yeah. Let's do this. But obviously it makes sense before any boss battle to make sure that you have uh, the person who has the first strike weapon out there. That's just a good idea in general. Obviously things like uh, petrification is not going to work against bosses, so it's not, a, it's not the smartest idea in the world to have that either. If you have something like counter-attack, it's always good to make use of it. Yeah, everything else is pretty standard. Okay. Time to roll. Let's see what this Evray is all about. Is it really as mighty as Rin is making it out to be? Okay, move in and pull back, so that makes sense. Only Tyson Riku can give these orders. So Evray is a pretty cool looking boss, I have to say. I mean, she's even done her nails for the occasion. Okay, 32,000. And it has resistance to all four of the elements, which isn't too bad. And also, releases poison breath attack after inhaling. 
So this guy again has a pattern. It depends on how many attacks you do against it. It has a counter for um, for an attack it has called Stone Gaze, which will petrify your characters. But first things first, it's susceptible to Power Break, which is the cornerstone of any boss battle. And it's also susceptible to darkness, so those smoke bombs that you've been stealing in Beaconel are going to come in handy. There you go. Already. Looking good. Remember, Kimari has steal and use as well, because of the route that I took him on the sphere grid. And this is the first time that you get to steal level 3 elemental items. So there you go. That's also useful. Now remember, if we uh, if we get Sid to pull the airship back, we will not be able to use most of our characters. We can only use Waka with his ball, and we can use Lulu with her magic attacks. We can't do anything else. So bear that in mind. So you don't want to you don't want to be doing that. Let's see what else. It's not susceptible to silence. It should be immune to it. Yep. I think it's. Okay, the phone rang, so I had to quickly check that out. It should be susceptible to mental break. Let's check it. Yep, it is. So there's that stone gaze I was talking about. Uh, the way that works, it has a counter. And as far as I know, for strength-based uh, damage, it will go up by one. And for magic-based stuff, it will go up by three. And when the counter reaches six, then it will unleash uh, Stone Gaze. So, you need to be wary of that. Luckily, we have Albed Potions that can restore things pretty quickly, so you don't have to worry too much. But it should be in the back of your mind. Let's do some damage here. Let's check if it's susceptible to poison. You should always check with bosses if they're susceptible to poison, because you'd be surprised at how many of them are. Okay, so after it's performed two regular attacks, it's going to inhale, and the next turn is going to be Poison Breath, which is a pretty powerful attack, and probably the most annoying attack that this thing has. So let's uh, let's bring out some high, high HP people to, to deal with this, and I'll show it to you once, and then after that I'll make sure I avoid it for future encounters. Okay, here it comes. Ouch. Not nice. But once again, Riku with her awesome Albed potions can uh, can help you out here. She can restore almost all of the damage that it does and also give you and also take away the, the poison effect as well. How else can you make this battle easier for you? Tigers can use slow, which is effective against every. For a certain part of the battle anyway. And as of this point, pretty much everything is in your favour. You should just be attacking the crap out of this thing. Because it's not really going to be able to do much in return. Let's get Walker out there. Might as well use an overdrive, why not? Do your thing. So, up until this guy reaches a certain threshold of HP, things are easy. But then, after a certain amount of HP has been taken away, this thing hastes itself. And then it gets a little bit more dangerous because it's smart enough that it will not let you um, slow it down again. So, if Tidus casts slow on it, then it will recover with haste, so it's almost like a counter attack, it will counter with haste every single time. So once it's in the haste phase, you're in slightly more trouble than before. And the HP threshold for that is, um, is 10,667 HP. So it's pretty specific, but if you drop below that amount, then it will counter with haste, and then from then it will be in the haste phase. But as you can see, attack reels was just stupidly powerful there, it just it took away like 15,000 HP just uh, very quickly. 
So attack reels, even at this stage, is a pretty overpowered attack. So, I mean, to be honest, I could end this battle right here, but let me, let's just play around with it a little more just to see what it can do. Again, the Stone Gaze counter. Remember that. But you're not going to see it enough times that your whole party is going to be petrified, so don't worry too much about it. I just want to show you what to do uh, against Poison Breath in case you're, you're struggling with it. So look, at the moment it's going to get two turns in a row, but in order to break those two turns I'm going to change weapons because that's a quicker move, and that will allow me to prepare if I need to. So because it's in haste mode now, it's much more difficult to, to get away. And normally what you do is you try and engineer the turn so that Sid gets a chance to, to do something before Poison Breath. So what you do is you pull back, and if you pull back before it can use Poison Breath, then you'll be out of range. But obviously for us, that's not going to work. So if Sid had managed to get this turn before Evray, then it would have gone far out, and Poison Breath would have missed. We now have a second person that can use um, stuff, so Kimari can toss it as well. So, like I said, while you're out here, only Waka and Lulu can really do damage, but you have one added bonus while you're out here, and I'm going to show that in a minute. Hopefully. Hopefully Waka doesn't do a critical hit here, otherwise it's going to be game over. Let me just use a magic attack to make sure it stays alive. It's funny that I'm purposely, purposely trying to keep this thing alive right now. So this is what it retaliates with when you're far away and it's in the haste phase. If you attack it, it's going to come back with this. And it's also going to make sure that it's close range. So if you notice, the darkness has finally gone and it's pulled itself back to, to close range. But there's one last thing I want to show you, and after that, we'll be done. But because he's been power broken, he's not, he's not going to do too much damage. Okay. So again, let's say for whatever reason you're struggling against Evray, a smart move, oh fuck. After the haste phase it doesn't seem to work. What you can do is, um, I guess before the haste phase, to get a little bit of extra damage in there in case you're struggling, is to pull back, and while you're pulled back, if Sid gets a turn, then he will use um, guided missiles. So that's like a, a free, free hit basically. So Sid will launch some missiles from the airship, and that will help to um, to do some extra damage, and you can do that three times. So yeah, if you're struggling, use uh, use that for some extra damage. Okay, I think it's time to to kill this thing. As you can see, a mixture of smoke bombs and uh, power break, mental break, all that kind of stuff. It's going to end up ending this battle pretty quickly. Obviously, be wary of the haste phase, but other than that, it's not too bad. The Albed potions are really useful in this battle. Bye bye. So this was the mighty Evray. If you're playing a no sphere grid game, this thing could pose uh, quite a challenge. So two more black magic spheres, which we can definitely make some use of, and a soft bangle. I think it doesn't give stone proof armors, unfortunately, so it's not going to be that great. Alright, let's crash this wedding.
Okay, so here we are, it's time to crash the wedding. But before you do, there is obviously, as you can see, you can tell from the screen, there's going to be a series of uh, a series of false battles. So before you get into those, make sure that you heal first, because there is no save sphere, if you notice. So if you screw up in these battles, then you're going to have to fight every again. And you don't want to be doing that. So make sure you just uh, take a little bit of time to, to heal up. And you're going to see one little interesting tip I have for you here. Again, I'm not going to do too much here. We can get Waka's TKO back. Okay. Bit of quick sphere grid action and then we can continue. I do have to say I really love Yuna's wedding dress. I think that's really cool. Girls, what do you make of, uh, of Yuna's wedding dress? Do you like it or, or not? I think that's pretty good. It's an interesting design. Obviously, it's not very uh, traditional. It's quite uh, different, but it is Final Fantasy. So I still think they designed it pretty well. I wonder if anyone's ever kind of used that as a base for their own wedding outfit, for their own wedding dress. That'd be quite interesting. I might have to tell my future wife to uh, to kind of check this out, even if she's not a Final Fantasy fan. I'd have to show her that and be like. Let's use this as a as a base. Okay. Enough about wedding dresses. Let's uh, let's take some people out. Okay. Tyus's HP is really shit. Damn, he's falling behind a long way. Even even behind Riku. Okay. First thing I'm going to show you, Waka. I still think I think he should still have Slayer mode. Check this out. Did you see the overdrive there? The overdrive went up by 40%. So this is a, an interesting little thing that you might want to know. If you have a Slayer overdrive mode, then these, killing these guys will count as double, because for whatever reason the game seems to think that the rifles that they're holding also count as an enemy. So when you kill one of them, you get like a double overdrive bonus because you get one for the the monk and uh, one for his rifle. So people with Slayer Overdrive will get a double boost here. So that is, uh, that's pretty cool. Okay, what else? Um, the most annoying guy here is this one. So do be wary of him. Why is he annoying? We'll see very soon. He has a fire attack that hits everyone, so that's why fireproof is a very good idea around here. And what I'd advise, these guys as a rare steel have something called a purifying salt. And what those do is they have a dispelling effect. So let's say uh, a boss or an enemy has like haste status or protect status or something like that, you can dispel it by using a purifying salt. And it does a thousand damage as well, so it's pretty useful. But, as you can see, it's a rare steal, so um, if you want, you can hang around to try and steal some of those, especially if you've taught a couple of extra people uh, the stealing ability, that will help you. And another thing about purifying salts is um, if you can collect 30 of them, which is quite a high number, I know they are rare steals, but if for whatever reason you really, really want it, if you collect 30 of them, then... Uh, then you can have a no encounters armor, which is pretty awesome. So that means that you will never run into any random encounters again until the end of the game. So if, you, if you're willing to sacrifice like a, a few hours in order to steal some, to steal 30 purifying salts, then uh, it might work in your favor. 